Hi, my name is uh, George Dagnino. I'm the editor of the Peter Dag portfolio since 1977. This is another presentation on the business cycle and on the most important measures of uh, economic activity, the lagging indicators. They are measures that will tell you when uh, the business cycle changes direction. Let me show you how. This is the, the business cycle. As you recall in previous uh, presentation, this is the time when the economy accelerates, gets stronger and stronger and stronger. But at some point between phase two and phase three, actually towards the end of phase two, certain things are happening that make the economy slow down. Then the economy slows down, goes into what is called a growth recession because it grows subpar. And then at some point, something happens again between phases four and one that make the business cycle goes up. What are these indicators that you should follow that trigger? What are the, the, the transition points, which, by the way, are very important from an investment strategy between phase two and phase three and between phase four and phase one? Well, they are the lagging indicators. There are many of them. I will show just a few of them, but as long as you recognize their importance, then you can find some by yourself. Why are the lagging indicators called lagging indicators? Well, because they start rising after one to two years after the trough of the business cycle. In other words, after the economy starts expanding, these indicators start rising one to two years after the beginning of the expansion. And they usually decline after the peak of the business cycle, but this time just only a few months. It takes a few months of decline, of slowdown in the economy, say around six months, that these indicators start going down. So they increase or they decrease signals very important transitions in the business cycle. Let me show you some data. Before I show you the data, the actual graphs, let me, let me give you another example of why the lagging indicators cause the economy to slow down or the increase in the lagging indicators cause the economy to slow down or a decrease in the lagging indicators cause the economy to improve. You can think of like a runner. Uh, a runner runs an average of so many minutes per mile, but when it, got, it goes too fast, then the heartbeat start going faster and faster and faster. So what the lagging indicators measure really is the heartbeat of the economy, the stress of the economy. If the economy runs too fast, then it gets is, is getting into problems. And what does the runner do when the heartbeat goes too fast, it starts sweating, gets muscle tights up, has to slow down? The same thing, the, when the economy is too fast, there are some indicators that show that the heartbeat is too fast, it starts sweating, it starts getting too tired, muscle tightens up, and the economy has to re slow down to regain strength. Let me show you some data now. There are three important lagging indicators. One is treasury bills, which is the interest rate uh, that the government has to pay when they borrow for, let's say, 30, 90 days. Obviously, an increase in treasury bills uh, causes borrowing costs for business and consumers to increase. So this is bad news for the future of the economy. You see what I mean? This is the future of the economy, although this is a lagging indicator from a business cycle timing viewpoint. But when they decline, then interest rates are come down. Therefore, you can expect business and consumers to start borrowing again. So this is good news. Inflation is the same thing. When inflation starts rising, then this is bad news for consumers because the purchasing power decreases. It also increases cost to businesses. So is, this is bad news for business and consumer when inflation starts rising. When inflation declines, of course, the opposite is true. It's good news for business, it's good news for consumers, and therefore the economy 
expands. Unit labor costs represent the labor cost per unit of output, and it represents business costs. When they start rising, obviously it's, biz it's bad news for business because now profitability is at risk, business has to increase prices to, to maintain margins, so really the economy cannot operate very well under those conditions. On the other hand, when unit labor costs decline, then uh, this is good news for business and therefore business feels more optimistic to, for hiring and everything else and therefore the economy is going to look better. Now let me remind you that I'm talking unit labor cost. These are labor cost, they are not wages, they are labor cost adjusted for productivity. This is released uh, quarterly by the, by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Well, what is the bottom line? The bottom line, if I didn't convince you, well, that's too bad. <laughs> but I, what I suggest, follow very closely the lagging indicators that I discussed, the inflation, interest rates, and uh, labor cost. They tell you what is going to happen to the business cycle because their trend impacts the decision of business and consumers. Forget about the Federal Reserve and all that kind of thing. Concentrates on the data. You use them to assess investment risk. Of course, we'll talk about this later in other presentations, but of course, the increase in the lagging indicators will tell you to use a more defensive investment strategy and a decline in the lagging indicators tell you that you should have a more aggressive investment strategy. Unfortunately, because of the time allowed by YouTube, I cannot show you and discuss all the leading indicators that I presented in the previous slides. However, if you go to www.peterdag.com, you will be able to see the complete presentation. You just need to click on the icon saying lagging indicators. Again, thank you very much for following me, and I hope you find these presentations useful. Please let me know. So long.